19-year-old Wes McGillian has only one thing on his mind. If they're ugly, it's funnier. If they're fit, then it's good on you. The plan is, like, going out, having a good time, and then see what's knocking about. Even if it's a pull, not even a sack, it's just good enough. It's not the kind of... No, nah, I don't really, I, I have no care about it. Nah, I really don't, it's like, there's nothing to care about. But Wesley's mum, Tina, wants him to face his responsibilities. I just want to know what you think about it, what, what you're going to do. Go out and have fun. You're just going to have fun for the rest of your life? Yeah. And what about the baby? What about the baby? Three months ago, Wesley received shocking news. My ex-girlfriend is now pregnant with my child. She told me on the computer, on Facebook. Still at college, Wes refuses to confront the reality of being a teen dad. What I'm doing about the baby is nothing. I just don't want to think about it. That, that's real, Wesley. But it's not here now, is it? Yeah, but it's real. It's just a photo. It's not a photo. It's a photo of your baby, my grandchild. One more. Wesley's mum separated from his father when he was a little boy. She doesn't want Wes to follow in his dad's footsteps. Every child should have the dad around them and have, be in their life 24-7, basically. And that's why I really want to push it for Wesley to think about his responsibility to his baby. I don't want him to be like a part-time dad. Because you've got to plan. Plan what? Plan, you've got to save, you've got to buy a cot, you've got to buy prams. No, how can I do that, man? You're going to have to get a part-time job because you're going to have to work extra hard. As parents, Wesley, that's what you have to do in life. Mum Tina is ashamed of his immature attitude. If Wesley didn't take responsibility of this child, I, I'd kill him. It wouldn't be the boy that I've, I, I gave birth to. <laughs> 16-year-old Tamsin Carruthers Cole has a broken relationship with her family. Really, kind of hate living here. When was the last time you had anything to eat? Um, when I try and talk to Tamsin, I will 99% of the time get a brick wall. Can I have some money, please? What do you need money for? I don't know, in case I'm going to get a bus anywhere. She's a very beautiful 16 year old pain in the ass. I don't know why I've been getting loads of money for you, I haven't. No, I've been being really good about it, so please, can I just have a fiver at least? I might just get a bus to the other side of Brighton or something. So a bus is two pounds. When I'm in a bad mood, I'm the child from hell. Mum and Dad suspect Tamsin is experimenting with drugs. I've had weekend benders. But sometimes it gets too much. If you don't sleep, you get sleep deprived and, and you go a bit insane. I don't know what goes on in her social life or what kind of peer pressure there is. I so of course I worry as a parent. I have a life at home and then a different life outside my home. And this is all secret. I've tried a lot of drugs. But everything really. Tamsin's parents are terrified she's throwing her life away. She's dropped out of college. I mean, she's not doing anything. You know, we'd always done music, for example. All those things went out the window. Most of her problems are because she doesn't say what she's really feeling, it just comes out as anger. I'm an angry person, <laughs> but I'm not. That's the thing. I can't control her, and I, I accept that. Thanks very much, driver. Oh, my God. I miss you. Fantastic. <laughs> Are you ignoring me completely? Do you know why you're going there? Right, you've got to think about it. And if you show us up, I'll be really, really upset. To try and turn their irresponsible teenagers into mature adults, both families have agreed to send them to live with new parents on the other side of the world. I'm just hoping that he's um, not got girls on his mind and he's, um, he's going there to think deeply about his himself and his responsibilities. Yeah, like what he's got to do, really. Yeah, forget about the women.
<laughs> I'm not gonna cry. She's not gonna look back. That's it, she's just gone. She doesn't like showing emotion. She told me I wasn't allowed to cry and I wasn't allowed to be over emotional. I want her to come back having found something positive and something constructive in her life instead of negative and destructive. Hi. Nice to meet you, what's your name? I'm Tamsin, what's your name? Wesley. Hi. So what brings you here then? Need to sort my life out. Same here. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. Still can't believe that it's actually happening. America, here we go. <laughs> The three and a half thousand mile journey will end here, up market Cape May, on the American East Coast. They have a straight talking approach when it comes to parenting. I enjoy my children. I have a good relationship with my children. But am I friends with my children? No, I'm not. I'm not your friend. I'm your parent. Good morning. Three of their kids are adopted awake. and two are being Kitty's fostered. Awake. They include on, it's Noah, 11. Guys. Chris, who is 16, and Zach, 17. Amazing. We were the very first gay couple in New Jersey to openly, jointly adopt children together. You need more scrambled eggs? It may seem unusual to some people for two men to have this many children, but when you get right down to it, we really pretty much do anything that any other type of family would do. Joe and Scott provide a stable family for children who would otherwise live in a state-run home. Most of the children that come to us come to us from a background that is somehow damaged. We've dealt with everything from petty larceny, lying, drugs. They maybe aren't used to the type of structure that we try and provide here. In fact, with that many kids in the house, we really need the type of structure that we provide here. With five boys and a beautiful home, two of those key structures are tidiness and cleanliness. We check to make sure that the kids have made their beds properly, that their rooms are neatened. How come the blinds are closed? Ooh, the room that's always a disaster area. Dare I? Oh my gosh, look at that. This house is, my, is one of my biggest accomplishments next to my kids. I would uh, say that the thing that I am most proud of isn't any accomplishment of mine other than my family. After a nine hour flight, the teens touch down in the United States. Cape May is a two hour drive. They're gonna be the typical American family, aren't they? American flag outside all holding Bibles, singing little <laughs> hymns when we're coming in. <laughs> I respect their views, but they've got to respect mine. But I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, true say that. Because if they treat me like crap, then I'll have to treat them like crap. Like, it's going to be weird if there's a dad there as well. Like, some male authority trying to tell me what to do. Are you ready for this? Yeah. It's two men. It's two men. Is that a gay couple? What is going on here? Hello, how do you do? I guess you probably didn't expect this. No, I didn't. Know. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Wes. Hi, Wes. Hi, I'm Tamsin. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Tamsin. 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 And Wes. Wes, yeah. I'm Joe. I guess you're a this is couple, Scott? yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, we're a couple you of something. Yes, correctly. <laughs> <laughs> we're a couple of something. And uh, we have other kids. You have kids so, as well? Yes. I bet you hey. weren't expecting that either. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, Tamsin and Wes will be living as children of the local Lavelles. Come on in. What a beautiful house. I'll let you introduce. Wow. These right. are our boys. And right. this is Daniel. All right. Chris. Zach. All right. Noah. And Justin. Nice to meet you, I'm Wes. And what was your name? Tamsin. Well, welcome. We do want you to consider this your home. We'll show you around and then we'll do all the formalities. Uh, all righty. So if you want to grab your bags. <laughs> you guys are going to be around the corner here. OK, after you, please. This will be your room. <laughs> Uh, there are empty drawers. All of these drawers are empty for your use. The closet, there are hangers. So we want you to be at home and not living out of a suitcase. Yeah. Okay. Wes, this is your room. 
You're going to be sleeping in that bed. We would like you to unpack and make yourself at home. Wow. OK. How did you so manage to have them um, kids? Uh, all of our children, obviously. They were really like tough birthday. Yeah. They were really <laughs> the tough children, birthing. The children are I think my tough. figure came back <laughs> nice, don't you? Yeah. Well, I think I did pretty good. Wow. <laughs> wow. What do you think? I wasn't expecting that at all. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> this is the first gay couple I've ever met, so... It, like, it doesn't bother me, because that's who they are, but... It's just strange to get your head around the situation. Scott, you uh, locked the liquor cabinet, correct? Uh, it's always locked anyway. All right. So this week, I really don't know what's going to happen. Really? <laughs> so, uh, I'm in shock. Truly in shock. Big shock. Some males everywhere. I'm used to living in a house of girls. <laughs> Joe and Scott believe that honesty is the key to their success as parents. Wesley, Tamsin. Could you come in here, please? So before the teens are fully welcomed into the family, the dads want to outline exactly what's expected of them. Welcome to Camp Scott. <laughs> this is Camp Scott. This house is run by me. Rule number one, no drug or alcohol use will be tolerated. The drinking age here in the United States is 21. There are no ifs, ands, or buts on this. I am nosy. I will find out. Rule well, number two, chores are to be completed when asked. This home is neat. We expect it to stay that way. And I have a few things under that. A, beds will be made each morning, bed and room inspections to follow. <laughs> B, keep rooms, drawers, and closets tidy. If you fail to clean up after yourself, I will call you back and you will do it. C, boys who cannot aim correctly <laughs> will sit. <laughs> funny one, right, Wes? You may find that funny. All of my children sit. <laughs> Bedtime on weekdays is promptly at 10. No exceptions. You're joking. No, I'm not. There's no way I can go to bed at 10. What time do you normally go to bed? About 3 or something like that. What's that? 3 in the, at night time. 3 at night time? Yeah. I'm afraid there's no way you're going to be able to do that. You do not want to press those rules. There is a price to living like this. It can be fun, it can be friendly, it can be nice, or it can be hell. And you can fight us. My children have fought us, and we've won. My favorite saying is, do your worst. Do your worst, and we'll see what happens. And that's all. You're free to go. That's it. Thank you. That went well. And so far, the issues seem to be minor. Yes. But I'll see. we'll see. It's... I always say down to have a way. I'm a man. <laughs> no way of sitting down. In the UK, right. both well, teens are used to total freedom. Well, you can see yourself doing all the cleaning up and making sure that his, you do your bed properly the way I'm, he likes it. I'm not going to be able to do it all properly. I'm not a tidy person. There's no time to like relax and just enjoy yourself and I just do what you want to do. I feel like I'm on a leash. Mm. It'll only take two. The one thing we didn't really cover with you guys is drug use. What is your opinion of people who do them? All of my friends do them, so I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything. Have you ever been asked to take any kind of a drug test? No. No. How about you? No. Nope. Okay. Well, you're going to today because every child that comes into this house, and you're not being singled out, no. every child that comes into this house is drug tested. The reason is we are a licensed foster home, OK? So if you're not taking, I won't have to worry about you. We're trying to prevent something prevent from happening. Prevent medicine. Yeah. Personally, so also, I don't, I don't really want to do it, because I don't, I don't want my mom knowing anything. It is a standard rule of the house. Here's the situation. This is our rule. If you're going to cop an attitude about it, forget it, because I'm going to tell you right now. It's not just you. It's not just you. We need to protect ourselves. Scott's hard line has upset Tamsin and angered Wesley. Why can't you just take my word? To... I'm telling you that I do not do drugs. Because... The point is that if she is doing, or if you are doing and not telling us, I... please don't do that. That's rude. Yeah. Everyone is going to smoke. OK, fine. 
No. Do not, but here's the rule of my house. You're do putting not, words into my mouth. No, I'm, I'm stating him. I do not take drugs. It's like personal stuff and I don't want to open up about it. I don't want those people knowing. I don't want, like, I, I, I don't, like, know them and I don't want them knowing, like, everything. And... Tamsin's reaction seemed to be one of guilt. You cannot have friends that take drugs and expect to remain drug free. Just a little, 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 little bit. Yeah. And uh, then screw the lid on. Unscrew the lid before you try and use the cup. To keep the peace, Wes decides to submit to the test. Got a little name tag for it, so so we all know whose is whose. That's it. That's it. That's all you needed, huh? That's all I needed. All of these, straight across the board, Which are pink. Here's what you just accomplished, OK? First of all, I know that you don't do drugs, OK? What's the second thing that I now know? That you can trust me? Right. Bingo. Trust. Bingo. You are the new poster boy for a drug-free England, OK? <laughs> now, Tamsin, everyone that comes into my home has some sort of screening. I don't know how I can make it any clearer to you, OK? Justin. Yes. Did I make you take a drug test? You didn't make me. But you did it. But, uh, yeah. No, I'll just admit it, yeah. I've had a major drugs problem. I've been addicted to drugs, and I'm not proud of it at all, and I don't want anyone to know, but it's too late now. You know, Tamsin, you, you know, I, can't, I didn't... Joe wants to find out more from Tamsin. You know, you told me that you dabbled in drugs in the past, and I'm thinking it was more than dabbling. I don't want to admit to anything. You don't want to admit to anything? Well, it's like things aren't amazing at home, and my right. mum has so much to deal with. Yeah. She knows that I've like, done it, but, like... She, she doesn't maybe know she to what really extent. She doesn't really know properly, and... She's just been through so much and had so much to deal with and everything to worry about. And it's not till recently that I've started to realise how much she's been going through. And I just want to make everything easy for her. And I just don't want her to know. Well, look, why don't you try and relax, OK? Tamsin's family troubles began after Dad fell seriously ill. I think it was 13 or 14 years ago, my dad got kidney failure and he's been ill ever since. Dad is on his third kidney, the latest donated by Tamsin's mum. You know, I mean, I've had three transplants, and each one of them has been, been there, the, the hope that I can spend some time with my children while they're children. It's been quite tough, and him having transplants, always being in hospital, operations going wrong, and mum being upset. After I donated a kidney to Matthew, I don't have the energy I used to where I could always fix everything, always make everything better. Part of me's always been kind of angry that I've never really had a dad because he's been kind of in bed, working, being ill. That's what I know him for. I, I don't like to get in a confrontation on the first day that I meet someone, so I think perhaps letting this go for a little while, coming back to it later, is is what we need to do. Good morning. Rise and shine, sir. We're going to be checking the place in about 15 minutes, so get yourself up. In the Lopa Lavelle household, the daily routine starts bright and early. It is important to get off from a good start because then you're going to have a good day. Pretty good, pretty good. I'll be in to check it, trust me. Laying about in bed is not an option. Good morning! There, ah. Oh. Good morning, sir. Uh, Time to wake up. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Say good morning, uh, Wesley. Good morning, <laughs> Wesley. There we are. Oh, yes. Oh, pug in the morning. 
Pug in the morning there. <laughs> now maybe you'll get out of bed. <laughs> there, that worked. <laughs> Very good girl, Gracie. Scott used to manage a motel, so breakfast is run like a well-oiled machine. These are the rules. Someone is asked to set the table. Then after dinner, someone clears the table, somebody rinses the dishes, somebody washes pots and pans. I've never done chores. Never do chores. You don't? You don't do chores. Who, who does the chores at your house? My mom. Your mom. Does your mother work? Mm-hmm. Do you work? Mm-hmm. So you lounge about the house all day while your mother does everything? Basically, yeah. Boy, would that make me angry. <laughs> Gotta tell you, if you don't have a job, who pays for everything you do? My mom pays for everything. She pays for everything? Yeah. Wow. Wesley is a big kid. He's 19 chronologically, but a lot of the attitudes that I hear from his mouth are those that I would expect to hear from a 15-year-old child. With Tamsin's admission of frequent drug use back home, Scott and Joe have decided that she must remain in the house under close supervision. They have other plans for work shy Wesley. You need to learn what it is that people do to earn the money that you're so eager to take and spend without contributing. All right. Wesley, are you ready? Joe believes that holding down a job teaches teenagers how to become responsible adults. What's all the kids doing back at home? Oh, we're going to have all kinds of fun. I thought we would lounge about on the couch and uh, we might watch Manchester United. Wes is starting work at the Irma Deli, a traditional diner run with a strong American work ethic. Most staff here do a 10-hour shift with only short breaks. Hi, I'm Fred. I'm the owner. I'm Fred. Hi, I'm Wesley. Wesley. Self-made man Frederick Todd owns the diner. Fred, Fred What's that? I'm not, I've never worked, really, so... You never worked? No. Really? What, are you rich? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, well, come on back here. All right. Come on back. I'll see you later. Good luck. Well, then. All right. Yeah. Have a great day. What's that? Wesley has never worked before, so... Okay, well, just give me some basic information here so we can... Paul, the manager, tells Wes what's expected of an employee. Okay. The business we're in is creating the best experience we can for people. And we have zero to none little tolerance for allowing anyone to interrupt that. The food service business is probably one of the hardest businesses there is in this country, mentally, physically, and, and everything above. I'll be right back. OK. I'm very nervous. <laughs> big guys as well, big guys, aren't they? So I can't, like, chat my way out of it. This is where you'll check in. Today, Wes begins with a four-hour shift. This is my office here, in case we have to lock you up or anything. <laughs> uh, this time card slips under this red arrow here. You're now officially started. Ah, oh, <laughs> I can tell that Wes is starting his working life at the bottom, cleaning the toilets. Ah, oh, in Florida. Oh, it's not going away. They better be all working at all. Ugh. Like cleaning out other people's piss and shit. It's just not pleasant. It's not a pleasant job to do. I thought we'd be just doing all the fun, fun activities. But I'm stuck here cleaning toilets. He told me he had life pretty good at home, you know? I'm from just the opposite background, you know? I come from a house where you had to work. You know, I was working at 12. So um, my work ethic's a little different than his. Sorry about this. Tamsin has been kept at home by Joe and Scott. They want some answers about her drug use. What have you experimented with? 
Meow, which is the drug that I've been had been doing, they sell as plant fertilizer. Well, you can't sell it in shops, but they pass it off as plant fertilizer, so I can sell it. Plant fertilizer? Yeah, it's You're not. Kidding. It's not actually plant fertilizer. What is it? Uh, I don't know. You are putting something into your body, and you have no clue what it is. Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't know. What kind of a, an effect does it give you? Like ecstasy. It makes you just happy and. Up. Yeah, it, it seems to me, though, that with this meow, meow, I don't think Tamsin is happy doing that. Meow, meow is the nickname for Class B stimulant, methadrone. Legal until April 2010, it's popular amongst Tamsin's age group. Year nines at schools are just sitting there sniffing it off. Yeah, like during school. school. During school, people are doing it. Every, everyone is taking it. Like, 14-year-olds at schools are sitting there taking it. I don't need it to have a good night, but it makes the night more interesting. The insane person is coming to get us, and he's going to kill us. No, he won't kill us. He's scared of me, so I'm bad. Tamsin's drug use is a major barrier between her and her parents. I do try and have discussions with her, but Tamsin is very adamant. She just completely blocks me and says, I do not take drugs, I am not for example, and so I can't go any further in a discussion about what things could mean without her getting quite cross with me. The dads are slowly getting Tamsin to open up, but they're concerned she doesn't talk to anyone at home. We talked about an open line of communication with our kids. Have you ever sat your mother down? I've spoken to her about and it, said, yeah, in, but... in a calm, rational yeah. fashion, or did you I yell? I... Did no, you yell? I cried. There has to be someone that you trust enough no, to help I you. don't trust anyone fully. <sighs> Honey, it's through talking that, that you're going to figure out that the you're going to you're going to figure out the answers. It's through talking I that can't talk about this. it. It just hurts me so much to talk about it. If Tamsin can let down her barriers um, and sit down with her mom and discuss this with the idea that her mom isn't going to condemn her, I think that really is the point. I think she's afraid of being condemned. Disturbed by Tamsin's ignorance of what she's taking, Scott and Joe decide to do their own research on Meow Meow. Meow Meow here. Its intended effects for recreational use are similar to those derived from speed, ecstasy, and cocaine. It is thought to be used by children as young as nine. Side effects are thought to include Nosebleeds, burning mouth and throat, headaches, nausea, high blood pressure, teeth grinding, joint pain, cold or blue fingers, anxiety, panic attacks, agitation, paranoia, heart palpitations, insomnia, weight loss, and memory problems. Now, after reading that paragraph, I don't think I'd be ordering any of this stuff. Back at the deli, Wes has been moved off toilet duty. Is that right for them have a bit of um, soda? Please. And taken a shine to waitress yeah, Brittany. Pepsi, please. Cute, yeah. <laughs> so why are you over here? Uh, basically, I need to get um, responsibility and grow up because um, I'm going to be a dad. You're going to be a dad? Yeah. I'm going to have a daughter. Well, congratulations. No, it's not a good thing. I take it you're not even with the girl, but I feel like you just kind of, like, deal with it. So I'm, I'm happy the way that I live now, and, like, I don't want to change it because I enjoy, enjoy life and stuff, and I feel like because with this responsibility and stuff, it's Yeah, but then you should have been being responsible in other ways when you were out partying. If you weren't partying so hard, you would have remembered you <laughs> Protection. You wouldn't have a baby. You really can't blame her. She told me she couldn't get pregnant. Brittany's not falling for Wesley's Mancunian charm. I just feel as a person, if you don't respect your ex-girlfriend and the situation that you're in, yeah. no other girl's ever going to respect you. Yeah. And I wouldn't date you because I feel like you wouldn't respect me. Like, what if something happened with me? You'd be the same way. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. don't respect the situation you're in, so 
Yeah. You're a fiery one, aren't you? <laughs> wow. Looks like my sex life is over. <laughs> Shit. The reality of being a working man is wearing thin. I can't take no more. I can't, I can't do no more. I don't have the energy. Exhausted, Wes finishes his shift. Back at the house, Scott is taking Tamsin under his wing. It's not real hard, trust me. Okay. If you can play a cello, you can drive a car. And he has a plan to try and break down Tamsin's barriers. So when you want to stop, break. But you don't want to put slam the, on the brake. You don't want to slam on the brake because if you slam on the brake, I'm going through the windshield, okay. and I don't want to go through the windshield today. Okay, start the car. Well, I don't turn it. Okay, put this in drive. Okay, there you go. You're driving. Okay, it's okay. Okay, now you want to stay on the road. Stay on the road. It's a locked wall that she's put herself behind. And by doing one-on-one -on -one activities with her, it's someone showing an interest in her. Slow, slow, slow. That's very important. OK, and you always look behind you. Oh, slow, slow, slow. Put your foot on the brake, honey. You're going to hit a tree. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. OK, that's OK. Just keep it around. No, nope, you went too much. You went too much, honey. OK. There. Perfect. That's driving. You did it, though, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, see? And I'm going to go take some blood pressure medicine. <laughs> I have a little question, a little favor to ask you. What would you think if, uh, because of everything that you and I have gone through this week and everything that we've done, um, how would you feel about giving your mom a call and talking to your mom for a few minutes? And I think she'd like to hear from you. And I think that would be good if you called your mom, you know, and you just talk to, talk to your mom. Yeah. OK? The purpose of giving a driving lesson to Tamsin was I was showing her I trust her. I trusted her with my prized possession, my car. Scott believes that if he trusts Tamsin, Tamsin will learn to trust him. 4-4. Four, four. Hi, is this Mrs. Cole? Hi, Mrs. Cole. This is Scott Loper. How lovely to hear you. I just want to say thank you so, so much for doing this. Oh, you're quite welcome. I've got a little surprise for you, and here she is. OK, thank you. Hello? Tamsin. Hi, are you all right? Hello, darling. I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just all excited because I'm speaking to you. OK, Tam, so tell me, what, what have you got to tell me? How's it going? Fine. Do you want to tell me some things? I try. Mrs. Cole? Has she, go has she gone? Yes. She ran off. She's hung up and gone off. Tamsin? Yeah? What happened? I just can't do this. Honey, open the door for me. No. Oh, come on, don't do this, please. I wanted you to just talk to her and say hi to her. But she asked me. She said, what have you got to say to me? <sighs> There's no helping her if she, if she... If she can't get through... She can't get past... She cannot get past... the wall she's built around herself. Although Tamsin is unwilling to talk to her mum, Scott refuses to give up. It's a blame game. You're blaming each other. That's why I said to you, what you simply need to say to her is, I, I need you to forgive me. I need to forgive you. And then you open a door of communication with her. And there is no, you're a drug addict, and you're this, and you're that, and, well, OK, I'm a drug addict, but what are you? Do you understand? Because really, it's not like you committed murder. People make mistakes. We're not infallible. We screw up. 
I think it's really important that they're not kind of being angry or anything like that and that they're just helping because it kind of makes you not hate yourself for it. I was hoping that Tamsin would be able to say to her mother, you know, I have problems, that I want your help. That's what I was hoping she would say, but Tamsin didn't. Today, Wesley has decided to tell Scott and Joe the real reason why he's been sent to America. I found out like a couple of months ago like, um, that I'm going to be a dad. You're going to be a dad? Yeah. Mm. So, are you looking forward to being a father? Not really. Not really? No. Just trying to push it to one side and just not think about it and just think about myself and have a good time. You don't want to think about it. No. But you know what? I can't imagine a bigger responsibility than being a, a father to someone. I know, but I feel like at this age that I shouldn't have any responsibilities. Because I can't even look after myself, so let alone the kid. My feeling really is, you've done this, then you need to figure out and step up and become a man. The best thing to think about now is, what is the child's future going to be? But I haven't and, chose it, though. Well, you did. By having sexual intercourse without proper protection, you did choose it. In a family made up of adopted kids, Wes's attitude has not gone down well. Kind of makes me angry, because if you don't take responsibility, there's a lot of stuff that can happen to your kid, and it can ruin people's lives, especially that kid. He doesn't take any responsibility for his actions. He doesn't take any responsibility, apparently, for anything at all. And that kind of attitude really isn't going to wash, not, not with us, and uh, certainly not with uh, the future baby. It's Wesley's second day at the diner. With Joe's words ringing in his ears, he started to knuckle down. Where would you need a bin? His improved attitude has not gone unnoticed. Listen, um, what we're going to do now is uh, recognize that uh, I'm real pleased with uh, your attention to detail and initiatives and things that, you've, that I've asked you to do. So what we've decided to do is take the balance of the day and, and promote you to engaging with the customers. So look at this. This is something that you've earned. All right, boss? All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Gosh. Ah, uh, yeah, today's gone a lot better now. Like, it's something I've always wanted to do, so I want to see if I'm any good at it. Promoted to waiter, Wes needs to maintain a high standard of service. Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. You all right? I'm good, how are you? I'm okay, thanks. Um, what would you all like to drink? Um, a Coke, please. A Coke. And same for me. Same. Water. Water. Does a little one want a drink? No, she's fine. All right, do you want it from the fountain or the case? I want fountain. Alright, okay. I think you did really good. Cheers. Really thanks. good for the first time. And they to get refills in this. Yes, three refills. Alright. Should I bring them We're out? We're gonna take these out. Alright. Take it back out to the guy in the green shirt and I'll be right back. There you go, sir. You're doing a fine job. Cheers, thank you. Thanks. It's been a big jump, you know, from like cleaning bins to um, being out the front and interacting with people and taking the orders. It's good when someone throws something at you and you've not done it before and you have to step up your game and you have to just go straight into it and you have to just forget about the nerves and stuff and then try your best and I've enjoyed it, yeah, it's been good. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. There you go. And enjoy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Order in. Got that part down. Got that part down. Okay, boss. Good having you. Brilliant. I hope the experience was good for yeah, you. Yeah, I've loved it, every minute of it. Your wages? Oh, thanks very much. Enjoy yourself, enjoy the rest of your visit in the country. Oh, brilliant. Thanks for letting us come and work with you. I really enjoyed myself. 30, 50, 70, 80, 85, 86 dollars. I feel like an adult, I really do. Like, I feel like 
you know, this is something that you need to do. And instead of blowing away and getting pissed and stuff, like, I want to put it to good use and buy something which I'll feel good about and be proud of. <laughs> Quality. Scott and Tamsin have headed downtown for some quality time together. Well, uh, we are here. We're doing a little father-daughter type of thing. Oh, that's wonderful. And then I'm going to tickle her later. My daughter and I used to do this all the time. You know what? This is a nice time because it's quiet. Now, it's your mom that's from Australia, right? Yeah. Okay. And is it so now your dad is from England? He's English. Yeah. I think it's 13 or 14 years ago, my dad got kidney failure. Wow. Wow, that's got to be a horrible, horrible thing to go yeah. through. Did you see a change when he went on the medication and all? Um, when he had the last transplant, yeah, his face just swelled up a lot. Yeah, he's had it before, the transplant before? Yeah, he's had three. So I guess he can't work or anything again. Yeah, uh, he's been working the whole time, but he's better now. My mom gave him a kidney in February. I imagine it's really, really stressful. Yeah. On your mom. They say that it's also recuperation time is a lot longer when you give one than when you actually are getting one. Yeah, it was weird having them both ill, because I'm not used to it. My mum never really You were in the house, didn't you? I know. What was your childhood like? My childhood was different, a lot different than yours. I was adopted, badly, badly treated. I was burned. I had my jaw broken with a lead pipe. And what saved me was I told. I told what was going on and I was put into a national registry, and I ended up here. Gave my parents a lot of grief for a long time, but my parents stuck by me, and they still stick by me. I love my mom. My mom was very dear to me. That's why, with your mom, talk to your mom. You have no idea. You have no idea. You have no idea. Not trying to put I just feel bad that I've taken it all for granted and not appreciated them enough and not said thank you enough for them being there and supporting me through everything and every decision that I've made. With only a few months until the birth of his baby, Joe has a special job for Wes. Where are we going? We're going to go down to uh, one of the neighbor's homes. They have some odd jobs and chores that they would uh, like you to take care of for them. And I told them that you, given your newfound work ethic, yeah. would be thrilled. Well, everyone else seems to be having fun. Fun, yeah. Yeah, don't you hate that? Yeah, I miss you know, that. You know what that's called? What? Adult responsibility, all right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the new you, Wes. Hi, Hi how are you? Nice I'm Andrea. You. I actually asked you to come over so you can help me with my son. He is 14 months old, and his name's Trey. Wow. So these are all his toys, and so I'm actually going to make him lunch if you could keep him occupied for a minute. Yeah. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. What's that you got there? Ooh. You want to build something? We'll put it together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed. He's, he's a really cute kid and stuff. <laughs> you can feed him lunch. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Chicks dig me. Yeah. So you kind of just give him a spoonful and he'll open up. <gasps> Look at Don't that. worry if the bib gets messy or his mouth gets mm. messy. That's part of the whole thing. You like yogurt? Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> so I hear that you're going to have a baby soon? Yeah, I am, yeah. Got Wait. him. Three months. Three months. Wow. So it's scary stuff. Yeah, it is. It's scary, but it's exciting. I know this one's a really nice kid. So. Yeah. Look, we're done. Oh, did a good oh, job. Done. Oh, gone. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like seeing him pick up the drink and like running around. It's just a little, little, little person, really. It's just nice, nice feeling, it is.
just hit me, just like, just seeing my pick up his own bottle and smile away with his little self. I'd be mean at the years time, so. That's just what I do best, I can. Be a good dad. So not wanting to be a part of my like, daughter's life at the beginning and stuff. I'm just thinking about myself and that, and it's just selfish and I feel guilty and the baby's mom feel guilty on my family and that and I feel guilty because I could have done a lot more from day one and I could have been there and be more a part of things. And I'm just just grateful that it's it's you know not too late. Wes decides to go shopping with his hard-earned dollars. For once, he's spending his cash on someone other than himself. Good luck with your daughter. Ah, uh, thanks. And enjoy her, because guess what? They grow fast, real quick. Cheers, thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Good nice traveling, you. good luck to you. The British teenager's time in New Jersey has come to an end. I truly hope that Wesley will be a good dad. I think he realizes now that he needs to put aside his immaturity and get on about being a man. Hopefully that sees us soon, yeah? The family's just amazing and just full of joy. They've been through so much. They just know how to work as a team and be together and be there for each other and help out. Hi, right, Wes. <laughs> Take care, man. Yeah, yeah, look after yourself, yeah. I'm gonna miss you, man. I'm gonna miss you, man. But Scott has an unexpected uh, proposal for Tamsin. My fear is that within three hours of Tamsin returning home, she'll have her mom drive her to Brighton, and she'll be with her friends. And it will start all over again, the drugs, the partying, and nothing has been accomplished. Because Tamsin is going to do whatever Tamsin can do to run away. Now, I called you in here for a reason. Mm. How would you feel about staying here for a couple more weeks with me? I'd love to. Would you? Yeah. We would love to have you stay. I'm going to teach you to communicate with your mom and your dad. I promised you last night I would be behind you. You're kind of like mine. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Mom. May I stay in America for a little bit longer? Tamsin, of course you can. Will you promise to stay in touch with me, Danny? I'll call you, like, every day. OK, that sounds good to me. As long as you don't cry. Well, I'm trying not to. OK. Dad and I just want you to know we love you dearly. I love you all very much. If you can talk to me, you can talk to her. Thank you so much, Charles. You're welcome, honey. It is going to be hard. I'm going to miss home a lot, but... It's needed to stay here, because I do need a bit more time, and I'm really glad I've been given the opportunity. Tamsin, can't believe I'm not going on with you. Yeah. I'm going to miss having you here. I miss you. Uh... <laughs> this is it. Oh. <laughs> Don't party too hard. Oh. <laughs> Suitcase go in the back or the side? In the back. John Scarvey inspired me. I want to be the best that I can be. I think you're amazing. You're both amazing. I'm glad Honestly. You'd be, You'd be a good boy. Thank you. And you're brilliant you're dads. Sick. You're yeah. absolutely and brilliant you know dads. What? You're going to be a brilliant dad too. John Scott just helped me by just being there and just guiding me and just giving me good advice. They're very blunt and, and, you know, saying how it is and what's going to happen, and it just made me more prepared. Hi, Mum. Oh, I miss you. I miss you. Oh. <laughs> oh, these are beautiful. Proper American clothes. Oh, yeah, that's sure. cute. Oh, these are gorgeous. So did you get satisfaction of actually buying this out of your own money I that did. you actually earned? I wanted to. So you've learnt a lot from it then? I really have actually, really have. Within a week? Honestly. You've learnt all this really, within a week? Honestly. It was, it was there in the back of my head, but it just needed pushing. 
Two weeks later, and Tamsin is finally ready to head home. It's really nice of you to call. Yeah. Tamsin has been in daily contact with her mum and dad. Have you turned into a cookie monster now? Yeah. Cookies. I've definitely learned a lot about being honest and communicating with my mum. Because I'm wonderful and I got you to talk. Mm. No. If you can get a child to trust you enough to talk to you, that's the key. You have to make them feel safe, and you have to make them feel that you're not going to condemn them for what they've done. I feel really positive about everything. I just, I don't know, I feel like I've finally got my life on track, and I feel so much happier because I know that when I go home, I'm not going to be sad because I'm going to be able to have a relationship with my family that I haven't had before. I want to make my mum proud of me. I've got an amazing family and just shouldn't treat them like shit or take it for granted. Tamsin will not be travelling alone. Am I looking forward to going to England? Uh, hell yeah. Take care. Take good care of Tamsin. Tell Tamsin's mum and dad I said hi, all right? Oh, sweetheart. Goodbye. It's been three weeks since Tamsin walked away from her mum at the airport. Everything. Aww. Tamsin is finally able to face her mother and tell her the truth. I know that when I was taking drugs, I, my behaviour at home was changing a lot, but it was just because I was just having fun and the bad side of it I was taking out on you and I am really sorry for that. And I do realise now what it did to me and I'm never going to take me out again. That's a big relief to hear. I love you. Thank you, and I'm really proud you're my daughter as well. Sorry, and I'm sorry, it's been hard for you. Hearing Tamsin talk about having taken drugs is a relief to hear, really, because then suddenly everything completely slots into place and makes sense. I am so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> The step that she made today was monumental. For her to be able to say, this is who I am, this is what I've been doing, really showed a lot of guts. You did that on your own. You did. Oh, don't cry. Thank you. 